Hey guys, Greg C96 here, back with another day in the life. Um, I'm on my way over to the new workshop again, so I'll uh, I'll see you when I get there. All right, guys, I am back in the shop that is totally 100% not designed for filming. Um, so the lighting is that's okay. Like I said, I got a couple of things I got to do over here today. One, the garage door sensor is refusing to align properly, and even when it aligns properly, it's just not working. Um, so I'm going to jump that at the door opener itself so it's getting a constant signal so it, th it thinks the sensor is working. Not a good solution because it's no longer going to have the safety, but since I'm going to be the only person using the garage door, I'm going to take that chance. Um, second thing is i got to change the door lock so my not can't get in here and steal stuff. <laughs> Just being honest. Um, yeah, so we're going to get started with the door opener. So, you guys should never do electrical work either A, on a live circuit, or B, probably with headphones in is not a good idea either. Um, I'm going to break both of those rules because I'm only working on a 5 volt circuit here, so there's actual very minimal chance of me doing any damage. Um, I don't know if you can see any of this. Oh, what the freak, that just kind of goes off to nothingness, no, that runs that conduit. So I have black and white wire, red and white wire. So I want to figure out which one's which. So if I come over here to the sensor, I've got this one sensor here, which is a black and white. I don't know if you can actually really see that. I can only barely see it in the lighting in here. And if we come over to this sensor, this sensor is also black and white. <laughs> So, a hell of a lot of good that does it. So, I bet you the red and white wire is going to the control pad, which it is. So, we're dealing with the black and white wires. So, I bet they're just both getting power, is what it is. So, because of the fact that they're teamed like that, I can safely make the assumption that the way this works is both of them are receiving voltage because they're only a two-wire sensor. So both of them must be receiving voltage, and then it's looking for a signal on that second terminal, which is ground. I don't know if there's internal resistance, though. I'm assuming there is internal resistance, which means me just putting a straight jumper might not actually work. I'm gonna try it, though. Mm, that'll do. I, um, uh, I'm pretty happy with just the random camera angles I'm finding. So actually, theoretically, I should only need one wire to go across. I thought it hurt something. I don't actually know if you can see that because I don't know if the camera's at a decent angle or not because it's up here. But I know the can GoPro does some stupid wide angle stuff, so I'm hoping. Um, right here, I'm just grabbing, I grab my little meter. This is just one I keep in my car. Um, I'm expecting the internal resistance of these things to be far less than 200 ohms. So I just throw it on the 200 ohm setting, and we're going to... Oh, it's going to be more than 200 ohms. Oh, shit. It is going to be more than 200 ohms right now. I'm stupid. All right. So, the reason it's going to be more than 200 ohms is the circuit's not closed right now because the sensors aren't lined up and won't function correctly if they line up. I'm going to just have to free ball it. Um, oh, hey. More wire. This is... Uh, what the freak is this? It's stranded. That's good. 
Um, there's actually no marking on the spool. I'm gonna quick clamp it in place. Okay. You guys should be perfectly lined up to see that now. Uh, I just don't know if I'll be able to get a screwdriver in there. Again, like I said, you shouldn't ever do this on an active system. I'm just stupidly overconfident. And now we can release the clamp. The improvised filming here. This has been going for like 12 minutes. Um, it's probably gonna be about a minute and a half in your time. And let's see if it breaks everything. Oh, the door's opening now. That's good. I didn't bring an extra GoPro battery or a cable to charge with. Um, I'm getting a little low on battery. And, moment of truth. Oh no. What's going on? I'm really confused now. So I thought I understood how these sensors worked. Obviously I don't. Um, that? Oh boy. So um, I guess I'll have to come back to this. All right, well, a quick Google search let me know that my efforts are futile. Apparently in the newer garage door openers, which I wouldn't really have described this as a newer opener, but apparently it qualifies as that from Chamberlain, which is the manufacturer. Um, the way it works now is they basically, um, it's not just a simple normally open, normally close on the sensor. I guess there is uh, special things going on in the circuitry, even though it's only a two wire circuit, which that's messing with my mind. It's kind of cool, but basically, it detects if it's shorted. Um, so I would say if I could 100% match the internal resistance, like a perfect, perfect match, I might be able to do it. But basically the circuit board in there will detect if it is um, shorted or open or whatnot and not allow it to function as properly unless the sensors are there. So my efforts are futile on trying to defeat that one today. But we will be back for more with a part two to me trying to defeat the garage door opener. As a quick side note, any of my fellow tinkerers out there will totally recognize the feeling of not doing enough research on a project till you're already in the middle of it. Project's done. GoPro's almost dead. I'm stopping the recording for now. <laughs>